Hi guys, welcome to diabetes and its control. So we will be looking at the two types of the diabetes and how they can be controlled. So in our previous videos, we've covered all of the aspects of specification. We only got now types of diabetes type one and two. But our previous video cut off at this point when we were looking at the glucagon and insulin. And uh, the graph shows changes in plasma glucose concentrations that occurred in a person who went without food for some time. And you need to use the evidence from the graph to explain the role of negative feedback in the control of plasma glucose concentration. So on the graph, we've got a uh, time okay against the plasma glucose concentration and we've got the co the key here so uh, changes here are due to glucagon the dark one so i put the g here so then it's easy to look at the uh, answers and finally we've got the changes due to insulin which are the lighter bands okay and uh, this is the point from uh, where there is no food okay so that means no glucose right so remember that glucagon is uh, is secreted to increase the blood glucose concentration but insulin is then to decrease the blood glucose concentrations and what we can see here from the graph there are fluctuations uh, fluctuations but they're all staying in uh, trying to stay in that norm okay so looking at the evidence there are deviations of value from the norm that which shows that the uh, corrective mechanism is in place so the fluctuations will be uh, detected by the hypothalamus or the isolate cells in pancreas so here we're talking about alpha and beta cells so what happens the initial decrease will be then uh, will be then recognized by uh, by the cells because there is not food given so alpha cells are going to uh, detect the change in that and they're going to secrete glucagon so glucagon is going to obviously uh, produce uh, undergo the processes for example the uh, hydrolysis of glycogen uh, to the glucose which will start increasing the concentration of the glucose but uh, that increase will be then detected by beta cells because the concentration will go too high hence the beta cells later on are going to uh, secrete uh, insulin which will then uh, decrease the blood glucose concentration and in the correct manner we are going to obviously see the changes but the main idea of those changes is to bring the corrective mechanism so which is obviously our negative feedback so uh, in terms of the diabetes there are two dia two types of the diabetes type 1 and type 2 type 1 it's the insulin dependent uh, diabetes which uh, tells you that the body is unable to produce insulin so uh, how to co overcome this we need to inject uh, those patients with the insulin in terms of the type 2 diabetes is the insulin independent diabetes and the body can produce secrete its own insulin but the problem is with the proteins so the receptor proteins on the target cells so on the liver cells are not going to respond to the insulin so it could be due to the fact that they are abnormal so they lost their resp uh, responsibility to act on the insulin home and this is due to the poor diet obesity so we will be looking at many questions to uh, to, t to show you how to answer the questions on the diabetes so diabetes one so we need to give two ways in which people with type 1 diabetes control their blood glucose concentration. So what we've said, they are uh, they cannot produce their own insulin, hence they will be getting injections uh, to control the blood glucose concentration in their diet. Another question, we've got type 2 diabetes. And some people with type 2 diabetes have cells which do not respond to insulin. So what we've said about those faulty proteins. 
and explain how this leads to a reduced ability to regulate blood glucose concentration. <coughs> so if they have uh, abnormal receptors on the cell uh, surface membrane of the liver cell, they will then have less glucose transport proteins, so less glucose can enter, for example, the liver cell, and less of that glucose could be converted into glycogen for the storage. So, hence, the blood glucose concentration won't be able to uh, decrease. Right, another, uh, another question about the abnormal receptors is to suggest one way in which insulin receptors might be abnormal. So there are a few examples. So insulin uh, is unable to attach to the receptors on the target cells, on the liver cells. So they reduce the uptake of glucose into the cells by facilitated diffusion because there is no carrier proteins or no channel proteins for the transport. So another question we've got about diabetes and insulin. So we need to explain how insulin will then lower the blood, concentra blood glucose concentration. So again, another model answer and look, the same words are coming. So the insulin binds to the receptors on the target cells, which, are, which is the liver cell, causes more transport proteins, the carrier uh, proteins to be active. So the glucose can enter uh, the cells uh, from the blood to the cells that will then lower blood glucose concentration. And for example, glucose could be converted into glycogen for the storage or uh, could stimulate fatty acids or lipids production. So glucose could be converted to those. Or another way, which we've mentioned in our previous videos, is to increase the rate of respiration because respiration uses glucose for glycolysis. Another typical question when we need to look at the a diabetic person and non-diabetic person and each at the same amount of glucose. So they tested them one hour later and the glucose concentration in the blood of diabetic person obviously was higher to what we expected than the one of non-diabetic person and explain why. So in diabetic person, we don't have the uh, insulin, okay, that could be one, the reduced sensitivity to cells to the insulin because the uh, receptor proteins are abnormal or reduced. So there will be the reduce of uptake uh, of glucose by the liver cells, so reduce facilitated uh, diffusion, hence the conversion of glucose to glycogen will be reduced. So as you can see all the time, the same answers are coming for the that topic. One more question here, uh, what would be the most obvious symptom of the diabetes? So obviously, if the blood glucose concentration increases, we, uh, we will drink a lot, so there will be excessive urination, uh, there, there will be diluted urine, and we will feel thirsty all the time. So uh, the topic of diabetes is easily linked to the kidney, to the nephron. So if the glomerular filtrate, so where the ultra filtration is taking place, of a diabetic person contains a high concentration of glucose, he produces a large volume of urine. And explain why. Okay, so what happens to this filtrate? We'll really quick recap on that. So uh, the ultra filtration is taking place in the Boltzmann capsule in the a proximal convoluted tubule, the reabsorption of glucose is taking place. So the glucose will be reabsorbed from the blood, uh, to the blood, sorry, here. Okay, so glucose is reabsorbed. So the concentration of glucose now in the blood is going to increase. Okay, but what we need to remember here, we need to be talking about water. And if this is the diabetic person, not all of the glucose will be absorbed as well. Hence, some glucose stays here. So, remember, if we're reabsorbing glucose by the cord transport, normally the water is reabsorbed uh, as well because the concentration of glucose uh, in the blood will be higher. But in this situation, when the glucose stays in the filtrate, the water will be reabsorbed less. Okay, so we're talking here about the water potential. So there will be lower water potential 
in the proximal convoluted tubule, hence less water will be reabsorbed. So that's what we need to say. 